Hi, I'm Maddie and this is Let's Talk Home Edition. I'm here with Louise, who's going to be talking about looking after our emotional well-being. So Louise, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Louise Harris and I'm the Children and Young People's Facilitator at Suffolk Mind and I go into schools and do lots of work with children about how to look after their emotional well-being and their mental health. So mental health is a focus for all of us at the moment. What does mental health mean at Suffolk Mind? So at Suffolk Mind, we're trying really hard to make Suffolk the best place in the world to talk about and look after our mental health. And we think of our mental health as being on a continuum. So we're all on the continuum because we all have mental health, because we all have a brain. So the continuum goes from well-being to severe and enduring mental health. And the crossover point for that is stress. And we all experience stress at some point in our lives. And it's the stress that takes us from one side to the other and so it's sort of preventing that stress really that keeps us in well-being. So what are our emotional needs? Okay so to keep us from being in stress and to keep us in well-being we need to meet our emotional needs and we have 12 emotional needs but when we're explaining them to children and young people we explain them in groups. So we say that we have needs to feel content. So this is about our body feeling content. So having good food and drink that keeps our body nourished and feeling good. I've got some cards here to show you. So I'll show you as we go along. So having good food and drink, and then also having lots of good movement. So when we move our bodies, it helps us to feel good and it helps our mental health to be well because we're putting oxygen around our bodies. So the movement's really, really important to keep our mental health. And the other thing is sleep. So when we're doing the other two things, our sleep ends up being really good because you've actually looked after your body in a good way and you're ready for rest. And having a really good sleep is really good for our mental health. So those are our emotion, those are the emotional needs to help our bodies feel content. We also have emotional needs to feel connected to others. And sometimes when we teach this in school, we get children to have a little hug like this to remind them we need to feel connected to others. So the emotional needs to feel connected are all about emotional connection. So finding someone else who understands you and you can make friends with, who accepts you for who you are. So that emotional connection is really important. From that, we have community. So being parts of groups and working with other people. So this could be sports groups or groups that you're part of. And the other one is attention. And giving and receiving really good attention is really good for us and it helps us to feel well. So it's when you give good attention to others, you get that good feeling. And the same as when you're receiving good attention from other people, so that helps us to feel well. So being content and connection are the two important things. Next group of things is feeling that we're safe and secure. So we call this being calm and in control. And there are three things here. So there's security. So this is feeling safe and free from worry. There's also control. So being in control of what we, um, being in control of some things, but also knowing we can let others go. And also having time for privacy. So having time to settle and feel calm. And the last thing is about feeling that I can achieve things. And this is really, really important for us. So having that achievement, that sense of achievement, knowing you can achieve things. So achievement is obviously the first one. That's really a good thing for us to help us to feel well and to meet our emotional needs. And from that, we have status. That's when you're valued. So people have recognized what you're good at and what you can do. And feeling valued for the things that you do is really good for you to feel well. And the last thing is having meaning and purpose. So knowing why you're doing things. So having a purpose for why you're doing it helps us to feel good and at Suffolk Mind we've got lots of really helpful volunteers who help us with things and they get their meaning and purpose from helping us. What happens mentally when we feel worried or anxious? Okay, so when we've not met our emotional needs, um, what happens is our body experiences stress and then that can make you feel like you have low mood or it can make you feel worried, it can make you feel frustrated and cross. So in our brain, we have two amygdalae. So if you could shake your hands like this and get your thumbs and we're gonna wiggle our thumbs and put them inside like this and then close your hand round it. Now our thumbs are going to be our security officers. So in your brain, you have two security officers, but just for now, we're just gonna look at ones that we can see inside brain so your security officer looks out for things that are dangerous now a long time ago in our primitive sort of state we would have been looking out for things that are really dangerous to our well-being so things that were going to attack us but now our body still has this reflex but it's actually thinking about um, things that might make you feel worried now so it could be that you're asked a question and you don't know the answer to it or someone says something and it makes you <gasps> makes you feel worried or panicked or stressed and what happens is our security officer wiggles like this it doesn't actually wiggle but it feels like it wiggles and then your brain goes <gasps> flip 
so as your brain flips that's that moment where you feel that like your heart's racing and you feel a bit sick and you've got those butterflies so your brain is going like this and when that happens we lose the access to our thinking brain so this is why so um when I, when sometimes when you're looking for something you can't find it it's because you're feeling stressed and you can't find it because you've lost access to that thinking brain and then as soon as you feel calm again you think Oh yeah, I remember where it is. And you can think calmly and you can access that thinking brain. Now, it's there's a really good way to trick our brain into doing this. And the way we trick our brain is by breathing. So at Suffolk Mind, we've got a really good way to teach breathing. So I'm going to show you my friend here that we use to teach breathing. Uh -huh. Here's Tanin the Dragon. So Tanin the Dragon helps us to teach breathing at Suffolk Mind. And we have a special way of breathing where we breathe in for we breathe in for uh, four with the children and we breathe out for seven so as we breathe in we're going to put one hand on our chest and one hand on our tummy to start with so as you breathe in i want you to feel your tummy going in and inflating like a balloon and then breathing out we we'll breathe in and out through our nose and as you breathe out you should feel your tummy deflate so let's try that again breathe in and breathe out and you should feel your tummy deflate now take the hand that's on your chest and just put it to the side now, as you breathe in, we're going to breathe in for four, one, two, three, four, and let your hand rise up and breathe out for seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, breathe in for four, one, two, three, four, and then we hold it and breathe out for seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, breathe in, two, three, four, and hold it and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're breathing in and out through our nose and making sure that our tummy is inflating. And when you've done this, even just three times, it gives you more access to that thinking brain. It allows your thinking part of your brain to work again and then you can think clearly about what's happening next. So everyone's been facing challenges this past year. Is there any way that we can be more emotionally resilient? Yes, yeah, so by finding little ways of meeting our emotional needs, we can do it every day. It doesn't have to be anything big, but finding little ways of meeting our emotional needs, um, we can feel better and it can help bring us back into well-being. So we all have times where we experience low mood or we feel a bit like things are getting a bit overwhelming, but by meeting those needs, we can bring ourselves back up. So thinking about our four groups, the first group of needs, so feeling about the um, feeling content with our food and drink, our movement and our sleep, that's something we can all influence. So maybe making sure you're having enough water and you're eating foods that are good for your body, not too many sugary foods give you that rush and then crash again. So lots of good things for your body. That's a really good thing to do. And of course, lots of movement. And movement doesn't have to be anything super sporty. It can just be dancing at home or moving about or even um, organizing something, cleaning something. It's just moving your body and raise, raising your heart rate enough and taking the dog for a walk, raising your heart rate enough so that you've got that oxygen pumping around your body. Body. So that's a really good thing to do. The other thing you can do is to feel connected to other people. You can make sure that you um, you actually make an effort to pay them attention and give and receive that good attention so you feel that you've got that going on for you. Um, so it's a really good thing to do. It's very, very easy nowadays to, to be tapping on our phones while you're doing something else, but actually giving and receiving that attention is really, really healthy for us. The other thing that you can do um, is to feel that you're calm and in control. We can do our dragon breathing, we can do our but also letting go of the things that you can't control. So there are things at the moment we can't control and we can control some things. So sometimes if you're feeling like you're not in control of what's going on around you, find something you can control. So even organizing something or planning something and controlling that can help you to feel like you have that sense of control and then you feel a bit more grounded from that. And the last thing is feeling that sense of achievement. So making sure that you're doing something that uh, that feeds into your well-being in terms of how you're doing things. You can create something, you can do something that helps you feel good, you can help somebody else. Lots and lots of things you can do to get that sense of achievement, that meaning and purpose so that you know why you're doing something. Where can people find out more? Okay, so you can find out more by going to our website, www.suffolkmind.org.uk. Um, if you want to find out about our work in schools, you can email schools at suffolkmind.org.uk. You can also become a friend of Suffolk Mind and you can phone our phone number to see what other services we have available for you. That's 0300 
111 6000. And another project we've got going on at the moment, and you can download some really good resources from that will help you, is Sammy the Sea Squirt. And Sammy the Sea Squirt is a little character that moves to help their mental health. And this is their brain on top of their head. And when Sammy moves, their brain feels good and they feel good and healthy. So at the moment, we've got a crowdfunder going on and you can download some resources when you donate to our crowdfunder. So if you look on crowdfunder.co.uk forward slash Sammy the Sea Squirt, you can have a look and download some things on there. So what is one habit or hobby that you picked up during lockdown? So I've been trying really hard. So one of our motion needs is all about privacy and doing hobbies that are away from the screen. And I find that very hard because I like to watch TV and I like to be on the computer and I've had a lot of time on the screen. So I've been trying really hard to think of things we can do as a family that are off the screen. And one thing I've been doing with my daughter is creating lino prints. So we ordered a kit and we've been doing lots of lino printing. Um, I've got one here to show you actually. So we made a little um, heart. This was one my daughter made. So we made a little heart print and we carved it out. And it was nice because there were lots of different stages so we could think about um, carving it and designing it. And then we printed it into a card. And when you do things like this, especially before bed, it helps your thoughts to settle. And so something that's not on screens, it helps your thoughts to settle, it helps to regulate your emotions, and then you feel calmer before bed. And it's actually worked really well because it's given us a reason to connect as well. So we've been doing it together. That's a good connection. And we've been sending it out to other people. So we've been sending out little cards to her friends. So um, that's been a really good thing to do. Brilliant. Thank you for talking to me, Louise. I think that mental health is really on all of our minds at the moment. So I think those tips of especially the breathing will really help people. So thank you. You're welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you.